Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Gardening. I'm your host, Matthew Watrich, and today I'm joined by my good friend, Jacob Weaver, to take a look at a couple of plants in his backyard orchard. Yeah, so what we got right here, two banana trees um, that are obviously a fire hazard given its proximity to this uh, pool heater. And so we're gonna be digging it up to um, help out uh, the new, the garden, and then also to uh, fix problems, so. Yeah, I'm super excited for this. Jacob's been kind enough to give me these trees and they're gonna be the, one of the latest additions to my backyard. But this is really interesting. So back in late April, I filmed a garden tour and part of that was over here at Jacob's house where these trees were really small. I'm gonna lay over some shots of those, but this tree over here on the right was only a few inches tall. And then these couple of trees over here have grown quite a bit too. There's three pretty well-developed banana shoots here. I, I would stand next to them, but I'm gonna be out of frame. They're about three and a half feet tall. And they've developed really well, given the fact that this winter we had about eight inches of snow over here and a ton of ice. So I've always thought of bananas as tropical fruit. They can't handle any type of freeze, but this has clearly proven that they grow back even when these freezes are pretty bad. So excited to see how this turns out. We're gonna get started with the digging over here and then we'll get these moved into my backyard. So first and foremost, I wanna say I have no idea why I'm not wearing shoes when I dug up these plants. I highly recommend wearing shoes when you're working with any type of gardening tools, but this was kind of tricky. We had to have an extremely small dig circle because of the location of pipes relative to Jacob's hot water heater. And so the dig circle is a lot smaller than I was hoping for, but we still got the root ball anyway. It broke off on this smaller sapling and you can see that here. I was really anticipating that the larger banana shoot would have the majority of the root ball, but you can see when I went to dig up the rest of it, I got really just mostly roots. So we're here in my backyard and we have the smaller banana shoot here. I'm pretty sure these were a combined root system, just growing two different shoots. I'm gonna walk where the lighting's a little bit better. Here's our other banana plant. Now I've dug a really small hole. Again, I'm sure you guys are gonna get onto me about my dig circle here. We'll just see how it turns out. This peach tree had a pretty tight dig circle and uh, she's turned out just great. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and get our camera set up and we'll get everything planted. When banana trees have a firmly established root system, they'll put off banana pups or banana saplings really easily. To be honest, I'm surprised to see fewer people growing these in Texas with how well these banana plants have done in my backyard over the past two months. All right, so there you have it. We've got one of our banana trees, I guess banana saplings, maybe two, three feet tall, planted in ground here. And again, I know y'all are gonna say, that dig circle's too small. I agree with you, it probably is. I'm planning on releasing a June garden tour. So that's probably where you will see these banana trees first. Then after that, I'll do a more in-depth detailed video on the banana tree transplant. I also just wanna give it two or three weeks to take root in my yard to prove that the method I've used was successful. Now that we've transplanted it, you can see that ground there is pretty dry. We're gonna just watering in a little bit and my sprinkler heads are very close by. I don't think this banana tree is going to have any problem adapting to its spot in the yard, except of course, as you guys may be aware, if you've been watching my videos for some time, I have very dense clay soil. And so what I mean by that is like over here, you can see where I've removed some of the grass. It's kind of like a little desert, like, this here is red clay. If I squeeze it, it's like pottery, like mud. You can make a container out of stuff like this or bricks. You know, it doesn't really break apart. It's very malleable. And so my whole yard's like that. Despite that, I've been able to have some pretty good success with this peach tree I transplanted last November. And by good success, I mean, I've got few dozen peaches coming along here well. So of course I'm using a little bit of a raised container for this or raised bed for this 
limestone bricks, whereas this is in ground. So we'll see how this turns out. I'm pretty hopeful for this. And the cool part is you guys will also get to see a long exposure time lapse of this banana tree growing because if you've seen some of my older videos, you'll know I've got an iPhone up in my window here that is filming a 100 day time lapse of my larger peach tree. It's gonna catch our sunflower and our banana tree in the background, which should be pretty cool. Additionally, over here in the shade, which actually will be in the sun all day. So it's evening, sun sets in the west, it typically rises over there, which means this area of my yard gets the most sun actually. So I planted our other banana tree, our banana sapling over here. And again, you're gonna say, what is that? A one and a half foot dig circle? What are you doing with that? Well, you know, it just came out from behind a water heater. <laughs> I figure if it can tolerate that, it can probably tolerate this, but don't take my word for it. Keep watching the video and take my word for it of my <laughs> three week future self. And we'll see how this turns out. All right, so I know I said three weeks, but I decided to wait 40 days. Today's July the 7th. And I just wanted to give these bananas appropriate time to really acclimate to the heat and their new dig circles. I probably have already said this in the previously recorded part of the video, but these were obviously poorly dug dig circles. They're pretty shallow. They're not that big around. And still this banana pup, which we separated from the root ball has done great. It's put out three new leaves already, and it just looks all around very healthy uh, given the circumstances. I know it's drooping a little bit, but anything that's putting out so many fresh leaves and it's only lost one. This leaf that it lost here though, wasn't like a natural loss. Uh, sugar, my dog, has been coming around to chew on our banana tree. So that being said, I think it's doing really well. And the other banana sapling, banana pup, not sure what to call it, that was a part of the main root ball over here has sprouted a second pup and obviously has grown a ton of new leaves itself. So again, it's been 40 days, which is almost six weeks. And these banana plants look like they're doing great. I put up this little circle of stones around it because sugar was trying to chew on these and despite it all they look like they're doing really well what's really surprised me about this is i've noticed and i don't know what everybody's experience with this has been i haven't been able to find banana pups banana plants or seedlings or whatever at pretty much any nursery i've ever visited in austin uh, barton springs nursery shoal creek maybe even moon valley i've just never seen them around maybe i've just missed them when i've been looking but they seem to be a really hardy and robust plant. These banana plants have survived the winter storm and obviously my haphazard transplanting. So it just seems to me that it seems like a plant that would grow really well in Texas, but I'm not sure why people don't really grow them around here. Anyway, if you have any suggestions about care that I could use for these banana plants, which again, I know that, uh, you know, if they're able to survive the storm uncovered and are able to regenerate so easily in my awful clay soil and shallow dig circles, they probably don't need a lot of additional care, but if you have any suggestions, please share in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching Austin, Texas Gardening.